So let's go team. I'm Chris Collins, and I made it my mission to get the nation gardening. In the next few weeks, I'll be showing you how straightforward and satisfying it is to green up those disused spaces. Whether it's community land, allotments, front or back gardens, or even just container plants, I'll show you the basics and even teach you a few garden secrets. My mission this week takes me to a wet Manchester, where I meet Mel, who thinks he's set me a stiff task. 48 hours to transform a neglected garden. Mel is a parks officer working in the environmental department. And here's the garden. How do you feel Let's about that? Let's have a look at this. Oh, don't look too bad to me. Uh, it's all right, a bit of grass cutting, mate. I'll do that in five minutes. Whoa, 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 hang on. There's <laughs> no. a bit round here, Chris. Well, five minutes? It was a little daunting at first. But on the bright side, we weren't starting from scratch. I could tell this could have been a top little garden once. Five yeah. years ago, it was lovely. I mean, it's, it was really nice. And let's hope, at the end of this, you've got a really nice garden. Let's see what's there. What's first things the first, the I'll need to give the site a wrecking. Straight away, I can see that this bit of ground hasn't been touched for a long old time because we've got a plant called Budlia davidia here, which self-seeds all over the place if you let it go. It'll even get into the mortar. Quite an aggressive plant. Also a little rose bay willow herb, which again is a succession plant. And that'll just spread everywhere if you don't touch the ground. Now, so. Straight away, I know this, these plants need to be cleared. We need to get the grubber in, mattock, get them going. Now, I can see another plant over here. And this is Pyrocantha. It's usually an ornamental plant, but you can see it's got these really evil thorns on it. Not a nice plant at all, and you don't want little kids running past that. So although it's quite a nice plant, it's more for an adult's garden. So we'll get rid of that as well. So this, basically, it's looking like this area is going to be all cleared out. Now, there's one little interesting plant here. This is Acamilla mollis, and this is telling me straight away that somebody's planted the garden at some point, because this is nice self-seeder, but you'd put it in for ornamental reasons. And there's a sycamore, self-seeded tree. That will get up to 50, 50, 80 feet if left it. Obviously near a building, not a good idea. All this is weed here, all this can be cleared out. I think I've got a pathway here by the look of it. So we can clear that, that's quite nice, brick pathway. Let's have a look at what we've got that's nice. Now this is our centrepiece. This is a plant called Robinia pseudoacacia from the Mediterranean. Beautiful plant. It looks like it's struggling a bit with the competition because I can see some branches in it, but that's the centrepiece. That's a beautiful plant. We've also got some nice back, what are called backbone plants or bouncers, you know, the, the plants that form the structure. Here we've got a euonymus. So that's a bit overgrown, but we can mould that out, prune that quite nicely. Lovely big fats here over here. That is a beautiful plant, but a little bit on the big side. And then we're going right into the jungle now. We've got a big buddlia up here and a big cherry. I'm afraid they're going to have to go. That's probably self-sown. Bit of a shame, but not real, no real choice. Lots to work with, but a lot of chopping and a lot of cutting and a lot of digging out. So it's off to meet my team. And Mel has mustered them on a parade ground for a little introduction. My name's Chris Collins. We've come up to build a community garden. So I've just been in there. It's a bit of a jungle. In fact, I felt like David Bellamy was in there. We've got 48 hours to do it. So let's go team. My helpers this week are a community payback team, helping me with their muscle to build this garden. Come on, don't be shy. Moment of truth. And this is where the team find out just what they've dropped themselves into. I'm faced by rampant firethorn. Or an old fridge as garden furniture, the team just got stuck in straight away. In what could turn out to be the first steps to a career in horticulture, it's literally baptism by fire. To begin with, all gardens need one thing to flourish. A good soil. Kevin John, can I borrow you a minute? <laughs> Just starting to get down to the compost now after all our hard work of clearing it. And this soil is pretty good and that tells me it's been cultivated for quite a long time. It's just quite a nice loam that'll be really good for the plants. If you've got a garden of your own or you're building a garden, say, for someone, it's always worth doing a little uh, soil test. Like, you might use a pH kit, but one of the main things I do is I get soil in my hand and I squeeze it, and it bonds into a quite a heavy, thick ball. You're on a clay soil. Yeah. Yeah, and that affects the type of plants you put, put into it. And clay's very good at holding nutrients, yeah? If you look, if you go to the soil 
and it just crumbles through your fingers and it doesn't stick. You're on a sandy soil. What happens with clay is the nutrients get locked into it. With sand, they tend to wash through. But the best way to do it, to get a nice soil like this, the art of gardening, the answer's in the soil, as they say, is make sure you've always got composting going on. Although this is meant to be a punishment, the team are clearly enjoying themselves. And we're making good progress, considering we're only halfway through day one. One of the things I love to do as a gardener is watch the soil turn. Just that sight of that, the flick of the wrist and the sight of that, and the soil springing round, I find like a meditation, really. I'm in my absolute element. There's not enough gardeners coming through, in my opinion, so that's why I think we should start the campaign for real gardeners. We are iron, root is on fear, no. The soil is in pretty good condition. The one advantage of a garden left to its own devices. But the weeds were rampant, and they will return again without regular maintenance. <sighs> Even though what we are doing looks destructive, for the gardener, this represents one of my favourite opportunities for renewal. General rule is, obviously if you've got a plant and it's ill or it's dying, us gardeners have an expression, right? If you want to keep a plant, give a bit away. So you take a cut and you give it to a mate, yours dies, you can go and get a cut in back. It's a current season's year's growth. That means it's been put on since the spring, spring. right? And then I'm going to strip the bottom leaves off. You can people quite rough with this because I don't want a bit of damage because that'll encourage rooting. Most important thing is you get to a node, that's one of these swellings on the stem, and you cut the node like that. And that basically, you insert that in a sandy compost, put it in a propagator, and your root will appear. That can take root up to four to five weeks. An herbaceous plant, I mean, fern ain't a brilliant example, but a plant like that, you literally just get a spade. I can make eight plants out of that. <laughs> By late afternoon on day one, we could see the shape of what could be a proper little garden. I wanted plenty new plants. The trouble is, is we don't have a lot of spondulics. I want to bring out the team's creativity and with a bit of luck, infect them with the gardening bug. So for day two, I've got a little trick up my sleeve that could help out in a big way. Ah, the Tatton Show. The Chelsea Flower Show of the North. Big flower shows like this are great places for gardeners, amateur and professional alike, to get together and see plants on a massive scale. But I want to show the team how to make the most of a big flower show in its final hour. It's a great time to be here because it's just coming to an end and they have a big sell-off, so it's a good time to get bargain plants. Now, I've got my team here. What we've got to do now is go out and see what they like, see what they fancy. We'll have a good old rummage around and get some plants. Come on in, let's go and have a look at some plants. With such a bewildering choice, oh, it's a lot for the team to take in. So I think they'll need a bit of horticultural guidance. Well, it's a bit, if you spin this garden, haven't you, Nick? It's a bit shady, isn't it? So there's one bit's a bit shady. So I reckon, if you can grab these, I reckon some busy lizzy, because they will take and still flower well in sort of underneath a bit of shrub. Well, I'll tell you what, boys, I've got my eye on this, because uh, container gardens, it's a mobile garden. What's good about them is you can move them around. Yeah, you know, I can follow the sun exactly, Nick. Is that Quite beautiful as well, nice little tropical collection. Aesthetic, Gaz, don't you think? Yeah, let's do it then, come on in. That's what I like, quick decisions. That and that, well, we'll bargain with you, right? That's score. But for 20 quid, this lot is a bargain compared to what you get anywhere else. The final hour at the RHS show can be literally a free for all, or at the very least, nice and cheap. For the real gardener, this is what it's all about. It's day two, oh and our flowers from the Tatton Show are here. Mel has done a great job in getting Manchester City Council to deliver them direct to our garden. Team are here now, so we can get on with it, get us all off, get planting. As well as colourful bedding, we've got herbaceous plants, trees, shrubs, veg, all the characters to make up a good garden. <laughs> The next stage of renovating this garden is to add to the design that's already there. Like pie shaped, isn't it? Cut it off in sections. Let's do it as different yeah. ones for the kids, so it was like a dartboard effect. So you spread it into quarters, and then you yeah. do, then you take Nick's idea and have ripples in each quarter. Yeah. 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 That sounds all right, doesn't it? That yeah, sounds that good. Sounds now that we've got some kind of plan to work with, let's get planting. 
lay out firstly, stand back and look, and then make any final decisions. The side entrance was a bit of a no man's land, so I decided to use some containers with bedding plants, some herbs and a bit of gravel to brighten it up. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but the good thing about container gardening is its flexibility. Right, if we go up to the top with the first one. Pretty damn good. The other one can go in there, I reckon. So you've got your own garden. Mm -hmm. What are your plans? We're thinking of getting a rockery, so I was going to ask a few pointers on how to actually build a proper okay, yeah, that's rockery. Okay, very good question. I've got my mind full of information. <laughs> what you do, right, is you dig a pit where you want the rockery to be, and you get some turf and lay it upside down, oh, okay. right, because that's your loam base. Then you dress it with gravel, mm -hmm. and then you put your soil on, and then you place your rocks in, mm -hmm. and you leave little planting pockets in it, and then go your succulents. Okay. Your fleshy plants, sedums, your alpines, okay. and that's pretty much how you build a rockery, yeah. yeah right. So we finished phase one of the garden down the bottom there, and the boys have done a great job. The bedding in there, it's looking excellent. Now we're moving up to the second circle. This part of the garden's quite important, because a lot of little kids are going to use this, so I'm going to make it a sensory garden. So there'll be a lot of different types of plants in here. For example, a bamboo for sound. You'll get plants for touch that you can hold the leaves of. You've got plants that'll have scent, herbs that'll have scent that they can smell. Plants that they can taste as well. And of course, what most importantly really, is visual, a lot of colour. And it should stimulate the little kids when they're running around in it. So now what I've got to do, is I've got to go and grab the plants, put them in situ and get the team planting. <laughs> As well. Right, okay. Planting a plant. This is a plant called Manis Harry Baker. Don't know who Harry Baker is, but still, don't bother me. Now, when you do a planting hole, a lot of people will say do it round. It's, I'm probably just being picky. But I quite like to make a square hole. The reason I like, uh, I like a squarish hole is so when I plant the plant in, the roots, if they're having trouble penetrating the ground around the sides because it's a hard soil, will actually find their way into the corners and then establish themselves. But I don't think that'll be a problem on this soil, so as you can see, it's a lovely loam. So I want a nice big planting pit, a bit bigger than the actual pot itself, so I've got plenty of room. Into the hole, spade across, my collars level with my soil level. Right, now this is quite an important part. I'm going to tease the roots. I want to encourage the roots to go into the hole, yeah? So I'm just going to go like this. And all I'm doing by this, I'm doing two things. One, I'm encouraging the roots, but also I'm snapping a few, and that stimulates hormone, which will encourage new root growth. Now, if I was doing this, I can do this because it's a container tree any time of year. But if you're lifting a bare root, a bare root tree, you can only do it in the winter when the plant's dormant. Now, in my opinion, I would rather do this in the autumn, that gives it the whole winter to put down its roots because it's not concentrating on top growth. But we'll still get away with this. So, put the, put the plant in the hole. Now normally, normally in the ideal world, I would do what is called a base dress, a base dress. And that is, I'd probably put a bit of bone meal and a bit of horse manure in the bottom of the hole. I don't have that at the moment. But what I do have is mulch, so I can use that as what I call a top dress, which will go on the top around the plant. Now this serves a lot of purpose. It's a mulch and it, what it does is it breaks down and feeds the soil, it retains moisture, it helps stop the weed coming up and it also protects some frost in the winter and it looks amazing as you'll see when we finish this garden off. Now the fundamental part of this job is to make sure you take all the air pockets out the soil and I prefer to do it with my hands, some people prefer their feet because if you leave air pockets in there the plants won't be able to take up water, it, basically you stop uh, osmotic pressure going into the plant. Capillary action, that's the word I'm looking for. You want capillary action, which is the movement of water through the soil, and it enables the plant to take up water. The other thing is, is if I don't take all the air pockets out, fungus and disease will get into it, and the plant won't have much chance of survival. Oh, we've got a great thing here. We've now got some good shape, colour and smell to our garden. Next, I'm going to add some mulch. This will make the garden easier to maintain and help it with its looks. So this is my, my bark chippings, my mulch, organic material. I'm just going to 
lay it down here. There's a bit of a path. And you can see straight away the sort of finish we're starting to get. This one's made of bark chippings. You can spread it on all the beds in the knowledge that it's doing the garden good. It's a piece of the resistance, this. I saw this piece at the RHS show. It's a map of the world made out of succulents. It really is the icing on the cake. But it weighs a ton and it's going to take all the team to lift it into place. As the crowd gathers for the grand opening, we drop it into right, position. Whether it's the big things like the RHS in Bloom campaign, or the little things like renovating a derelict space for the kids to play in, gardening can play a major role in improving our lives. Get stuck in. It can change your life. My next challenge, I'm going to go and do a bit of conservation with BTCV, the oldest conservation trust in the country. They've always got loads of work, loads of horticulture, and loads of community action. For now, though, it's off back to the concrete jungle. If you fancy yourself as a real gardener and you need further information, log on to the Royal Horticultural Society website www.rhs.org.uk.